A reading from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, and according to our likeness, likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And a second reading from Galatians, chapter 3, verses 26 to 29. For in Christ Jesus, you are all, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have closed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For you are one in Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise, heirs according to promise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One poignant scene that sticks out to me in the movie Hidden Figures is where Katherine Johnson has come home late from working at NASA. Her three daughters are still awake and want to say goodnight to their mom. One of them has drawn a picture and it is a picture of an astronaut smiling looking out the window of a rocket. And Catherine says, is this for me? And her daughter says, yes. And she looks more closely and says, is that me? And her daughter smiles and says, yes. Catherine tries to explain that she can't be an astronaut, but she can do the math to support the astronauts. And her daughter is not satisfied with that answer. In fact, she says, mama, yes, you can. And in another scene that we just saw in the trailer, Mary Jackson is asked by a colleague at NASA, if you were a white man, would you want to be an engineer? And she answers very quickly, no, I wouldn't have to. I would already be an engineer. This is the tone and the ambition of the three major characters in the movie Hidden Figures who have a lot of gumption. Mary Jackson is not deterred when she is told she can't take a particular prerequisite class because it is only open to white students. She goes on to become the first black female engineer for NASA. Katherine Johnson is a mathematician and her title is Human Computer. Human computers do complicated mathematical calculations, ones that we now do using a machine called a computer. Dorothy Vaughn is the other major character. She leads the West Computing Group, a group of black women who are human computers. She is doing all the work of a supervisor, but without the title or the pay. And she reports to a white woman who is much younger and presumably less experienced than she is. The movie Hidden Figures is based on a true story. It is a book written by Margaret Lee Shetterly by the same name. In an interview, she talks about how the book came about. She grew up in Virginia, the daughter of an English professor and a NASA scientist. She was surrounded by her parents' colleagues, black men and women who worked in the space program. So that's what she thought black people did. It was not until later she discovered what a unique opportunity that these and other women had at NASA. She really was not interested in history. She explains that the history she was taught about African Americans involved slavery, the Civil War, and Martin Luther King Jr. It was not until later she discovered that history is about our story. It isn't just famous people and government leaders. 
it is people's day-to-day -day lives and we have to find our stories in history. We can be the protagonist in our own story. That is why she feels this story needs to be told to show some of that hidden history, history that has been unseen. She wants to reveal that hidden history, but also not to shy away from the hard things. She is telling this story to show those obstacles, but also to inspire people to see all that they can be. Critics have said that the movie very closely matches what happened, and in fact, Katherine Johnson has said the same thing. As I am recording this on August 26th, it is what would have been Katherine Johnson's 102nd birthday. However, she died earlier this year at the age of 101. As we see in the movie, when Catherine was promoted, she highly doubted that she could keep up with the others in that room. And she ran into all kinds of challenges. For example, on her second day, when she went to get a cup of coffee, she discovered there was a new colored coffee pot. Some of her colleagues redacted so many of the numbers from what she was supposed to work with that she could not do her job. She was excluded from meetings that she needed to be in and her name was not put on the reports that she had written. She not only had to be as good as the men in that room, she had to be better in order to prove herself. It makes me wonder, why do women have to fight this much? Why are black people who have so much to give denied opportunities? These three women are brilliant and that is why they are able to overcome the obstacles and advance at NASA. This is a movie that makes us feel good. It occurs at the beginning of the 1960s, the civil rights era. These women have gifts and people recognize their gifts. These women persevere and they make it. They are role models to others who come after them. It is not hard while watching this movie to get lulled into thinking there were problems in the 60s, but that was then and this is now and things are good. Well, the events of this summer, beginning with the death of George Floyd on Memorial Day and continuing into this very week, have showed us that there is so much more work to do. Earlier this summer, several of us read the book White Fragility. And one of the things that I came to better understand while reading this book was about the concept of power. Who has power? How is it granted? To others. As we all know, this country was founded by white men and they initially had all the power. They are the ones who have the ability, if and when they want to, to grant that power to others. It doesn't go the other way. For example, let's look at the right to vote. We've been celebrating 100 years since women received the right to vote this year in 2020. Well, men have been able to vote since the founding of our country in 1776. And black men were granted the right to vote following the US Civil War in the 15th Amendment, 1870. Women, actually white women, were granted the right to vote in the 19th Amendment in 1920. But these women in this movie, which takes place in 1961, still did not have the right to vote in our country. It was not until the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that black women and other minority groups actually received the right to vote. That is only 55 years ago. This shows us how slow change is and 
all the obstacles that we still have to overcome. In our text for today, we read that we are created in God's image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. I have to admit, I've always taken this passage for granted. Of course he created male and female. But think about it. Genesis is the very first book of the Bible and this ancient text acknowledges both men and women. They are both created in God's image. Women are not an afterthought. All of us reflect who God is. The struggle is not how we are seen by God. The struggle is how we are seen by other humans, how we treat one another. How is it that we are going to end discrimination and exclusion and the microaggressions and systemic racism for all? It is not until we all take a look at these issues, examine ourselves, ask questions, be open to learning, and lift up those who have previously been hidden from opportunities and from history. We have made strides. It is no longer unusual for a black woman to work at NASA. We have the first Muslim American woman as a member of Congress from Minnesota. And just this year, a major political party for the first time nominated a black woman for the office of vice president. Now this is not enough unless we all commit to acting to change the way that things happen in our country, things that we are so used to seeing we don't even question whether they are unfair. It is pretty easy for us as white people to surround ourselves with others who look like us, think like us, have similar educations and financial status. And then to think about those people, whoever those people are in your mind, who seem different, who we don't know and don't have relationships with. It is up to us to broaden who it is in our circle and who it is that we seek to understand. Because in God's eyes, we are all created in God's image. Several years ago, a movie came out called The Shack that looked at the persons of the Trinity and how God might interact with the other parts of the Trinity and with humans. It caused quite a stir because God the Father, who was named Papa, was played by a black woman. Could this really be? This stretched our thinking. And yet why not? Doesn't a black woman as much as anyone else reflect who God is? Now Hidden Figures is a good story because these women make it. They overcome things. Katherine Johnson in 2015 was recognized by President Barack Obama with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I sincerely hope that her daughter, who in that scene in the movie was drawing a picture of a female black astronaut, got to become an astronaut or anything else that she dreamed of doing. It does not diminish us by lifting up others, but opening up opportunities to everyone makes us all better. Margaret Shatterly in an interview said that part of the reason the Russians were ahead of the United States in the space race in the early 60s is that they had given women a lot more opportunities than the United States had. They had a bigger pool of scientific minds to draw from. I would like to close with 
Paul's letter to the Galatians, he is talking about how Christ coming has changed things, how we are all children of God. Paul writes, there is no longer Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. We could add black nor white or brown, but we are all one in Christ Jesus our Lord. 